Hello, lovely friends. Welcome back. Taking a nice minute to ground in <coughs> and clear your throat. <sighs> and again. Ah. <sighs> Why not, right? And just connecting in with God's source, creator energy, our truest, most authentic selves in this now moment and in all moments. Only that which is for the highest good of all shall come through. And so it is. Blessings. Today, I want to talk about ego. Boop, 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 boop. If I had an intro, maybe one day, put that in a little brain journal. Have an intro. So, there's a real sweet spot. There's a real sweet spot of creating healthy ego in our lives and by that I mean sometimes we can be quite activated by someone else's ego quote unquote or how someone else is behaving maybe thoughts come up to project onto them of who they are and if you're following this journey with any kind of consistency this will happen to you about me I know it will because it happens to all of us in some way, shape or form. Some of us might have evolved the thought forms a little bit more, but that energy of needing to protect ourselves from seeing what we're judging in another is actually what we're judging within ourselves. And when the ego becomes a genuine tool for noticing when you're doing this or noticing when you're like noticing something in someone else and then can seek within you, to find the areas where you're like this or where you're judging yourself and what beliefs might be underneath that process. There is so much wisdom in that space. There is so much power in that. And I feel that really comes from being very gentle with the ego. I don't think it comes from slaying the ego or saying that it's fighting against you. I don't believe that at all. That's not my truth. My resonance is that the ego is trained. It, it's it's like a, a program. I wouldn't get angry at my computer if the programming was faulty. I'd just take it to get fixed. You know, I'd get a new program. So let's take the stress out of it, right? Take Take the charge out of it. Put that charge somewhere else. <laughs> It's a waste of my energy to get charged about what the ego is or isn't doing, you know. So this is, again, it's just my perspective where I'm at and um, lovingly surrendering or uh, need to convince you of anything. You don't need to think the same way as me. Maybe you love your battles. Your inner warrior just digs that battle with the with the ego inside or the the quote unquote ego that is separate from the self which in my world just doesn't exist because I view the ego as the way we know in which we're alive I view ego as consciousness in a body and there are I suppose two types of ego in that regard there's like the armored ego the armored ego is very defensive or offensive in its nature and then there's the healthy ego, which is like a sense of concept, a sense of identity. This is like, no, this is who I am. Actually, no, I'm I'm not going to attune to that vibration. You know, I'm going to lovingly allow myself to feel that and say that it's perfectly valid and important for being there. But no, I'm not spending any more time there. Sorry, I want to be here. I want to be in this space. I'm bringing myself back, bringing myself back, bringing myself back. Every time I begin, nope. I don't want to go down that road anymore. I know where it goes. I want to go this way. This way is where I want to be. And that comes from ego, right? Otherwise, we'd be here, there, and everywhere, dancing with the fairies, which sometimes is fantastic. Trust me, I danced with fairies for 28 years. It was fantastic. But it was like they, there came a point, and there comes a point, I think, in all of our lives when actually the uh, the trial and error stage never ends, 
but you refine your process, right? You you understand enough vaguely. Understand, using that term loosely. Everything is definition. And when we really feel into ourselves what feels innate in the body, we can feel our yes, we can feel our no. We can feel what it is that we're really embodying in that now moment. And that's allowed to change. We're allowed to evolve beyond that point, that perspective. And one of the things I find in my life very often is I will have uh, a space of truth and then very quickly evolve from that truth into something deeper, into more understanding. And I will cycle through that awareness again and again and again. And before I started to notice that that was beautiful and actually giving me a far more holistic, large, big scale vision of myself and of the collective and of how I can be of service and of, you know, how I want to navigate this world. What do I want? Do I want my life to have meaning? So many things, so many things that we get to choose. We get to choose. No one on the internet gets to tell us how we should be or who we should be or if we should show up or not show up, but that's a decision we make for ourselves. And something that's become really highlighted for me is that I am my own greatest gift. I am my own greatest coach, my greatest mentor, the one that keeps me on track that this year has done the most incredible things with ease and grace and love. And yes, I've fallen on my face a few times, but it's, I'm so proud of myself as an ego to an ego, as a spirit to an ego. And spirit is allowed to understand itself through the consciousness of the ego, through the expansion of the ego, through the ego understanding itself, through us evolving this ego. Let's fall in love with the ego. Let it be our friend. If we're talking about peace, world peace around the world, world peace around the world, but if we're, <laughs> if we're talking about grand scale peace, on this planet, in this universe, whatever cosmic battle we want to be fighting in or out starts here, correct? So let's stop using language or giving definitions to things that actually don't need to be as aggressive, as assertive, as this, that, and the other. And we might think that we're just being factual or that we're being uh, direct, but there's actually a huge difference between directness with an open heart. It's clear, it's concise, it's precise. It actually feels quite good sometimes to be around, even if you're in a disempowered state. I find it delicious, personally, now. <laughs> but I didn't always. Having that invitation for us to rise to that level, to rise into that vibration of awareness. And... As I begin to, con you know, continue sharing more of what I encounter in my own world, I realize, oh, wow, like I actually do really approve of the things that I've gone through in life, the, the judgments I've made about other people. I, I don't condemn myself for that anymore. And there are spaces and places where I still fixate. A coach of mine the other day said I was looking so closely at this like, tiny detailed spot and I'd completely forgotten this grand scale reality that was uh, encompassing it, that was hugging it, surrounding it, loving it, nurturing it. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, there's there's so much of my nature and I believe of human nature that implores we look at the, the blemish, not the big picture. And um, when the ego can be trained to bring us back to the big picture, and by ego, I mean self-concept, stronger senses of identity, stronger senses of discernment. How do I know if something is or isn't for me when I hear it? Stronger yeses and nos. Get rid of the maybes. It's what Shoshana Raven talks about, living brave, amazing. I mention her all the time, but she really inspires me. It's the truth. When we eliminate the maybes, we have so much more room. And if we say no to something and we think, oh, no, I regret that decision. Ah, Again, that's coming from a lack. 
that's coming from a space of oh the universe isn't abundant and loving and will not provide me the next greatest alternative that might even be better because I will have learned more about myself in the process <sighs> you know there is no wrong nothing is definitive unless we choose to take our life or we make a, a conscious decision to really leave something behind. And sometimes we have to do that, you know, we, we have a finite time here on earth. And all of those things are gorgeous. All of those things are beautiful. And all of those things will feel innate to us. We have so many different aspects of self. We have our biological self, our ancestral self is directly correlated, actually, to be honest, they're not opposing, but in, in some senses, they have conflicts of interest. There are mental aspects thought forms attachments within that the the kind of spiritual knowing inside we have that we're connected to something so much more powerful than we are and the practice of yoga for example is the practice of union the practice of of embodying all of these aspects of self and creating a, a coherent state which is essentially things about you know like dr joe Dispenza talks about or we talk about heart brain coherence all of these things the alignment of our energy to move with all of us forward because when we can unite the in inner realm we have that effect on the outer realm too and that ripples out it ripples out and i'm not talking about oh we have to like grand scale unite all aspects of our personality that have been you know opposed but what might that feel like can we find that what might it feel like to be completely whole in ourselves what might it feel like to have all of us aligned in one space with a clear and concise direction it doesn't matter if you don't have it right now but what would it feel like and just ask yourself let your higher self show you let god show you let source show you let the light in and every day, in every way, we're getting stronger and stronger. Every day, in every way, we're getting closer and closer. Every day, in every way, we're getting lighter and lighter. Thank you, Tony Robbins, for that delicious brain worm <laughs> affirmation. And I invite us to just come into a softness. You can't you just tired of being hard all the time and and looking out for defenses and 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 who's on who's on the attack what what if no one was attacking you what if you were attacking yourself what if you were attacking outside of yourself and sending thought forms of defensiveness and attack to loving grateful beings who want to be in your life but actually you've been so self-destructive for so long, thinking so horrible, horribly about yourself that you can't let that in right now. So we're attracting the vibration of people that are going to hurt us. The change starts here. It starts inside. And I'm not someone who can sit there and let people stay in their victim energy because if someone was opposite from me and they noticed that I would want them to tell me because I want to live in an empowered place I am a sovereign being right so are you we make that decision again and again and as Ramdas says we walk each other home so who do we want to be do we want to play big do we want to play finite do we want to play tiny little blemish? Or do we want to play global? Do we want to play big picture? Once in a lifetime. Never before seen. Never again replicated. Do you know why I don't care if people copy me? Or if they say things I say and take credit for it? Which happens actually more than you'd think all the time actually I remember all the places that I took that inspiration from and I remember all the ways that I made that unique 
and I remember the frequency that I alone hold in this on this earth and I get really confident in that place and even if temporarily I'm off kilter I just realign back up again and hey presto here we are magic again step forward step forward step forward doesn't matter how long it takes all that matters is that we're doing it with grace with love compassion for self and other as self we are one and the same i am you and you are me that's also a quote i received from a friend once so next time we're getting angry or jealous or blameful Let's just remember what belief would I have to have about myself for me to be judging the qualities in me that I judge in this being and really feeling what that might feel like. For some of us, that might be too painful to even comprehend. But for others of us who have sat with enough of ourselves, have shared enough, vulnerably with others that might feel a little bit nice that might feel a little bit powerful it might feel like the start of the next big adventure all unfolds in the perfect way namaste <laughs> e